My wife and I have been, we have been married, uh, this will be our 20th year. We made two decades together so far. And that's, that's saying a lot today, considering how divorce rates are high, even amongst people in the church, and how that people are separating from each other every time you turn around. And so the enemy is really fighting in that area of marriage. And I think that's one of the reasons why we were determined to do this, because we saw the attacks uh, we saw the, the enemy do using all different types of methods to try to get us to split, to get us to fall out of. And we've had friends, people that we've known for years that had separated, that divorced for whatever reason. They were Christian, good, God-loving, God-fearing, in ministry, some of them, Christians that had decided that they were no longer going to be married because of whatever reason. And now people are splitting over things that really shouldn't even be divorced over. Right. Um, God bless everyone out there, Radio Land. This is Prophet and the Prophetess herself, Barry and Karen, with Embracing Marriage with Barry and Karen. And we thank God for the opportunity to come before you today. At least on this evening, we're coming before you. <laughs> Another night podcast. That's the best way we can do it. Um, again, we thank God for the privilege. I don't like that privilege of just coming before you and just you know partaking in this podcast with you so yeah we're gonna try we're just gonna try to fix this don't sound right so <laughs> hear that little little hiss in the air so um well wife how are you today <laughs> i'm doing good <laughs> damn i had a good day today yeah we we, we I was off today, and so she she worked, and so I just kind of relaxed and did my usual. I um, did do a podcast by myself. Usually, I would I would do one. I said I was going to do one, and of course, it, that's why I'm sitting here now. <laughs> I actually um, I was speaking to my brother, who, by the way, <clears throat> excuse me, who, by the way, he does. Uh, something also too on um on part on uh not on the same thing that we're on but on a different thing uh, he does it on facebook i think he does like a facebook kind of thing he does facebook live and so we um we actually um we're talking about a message that he was going to minister um and so that's what uh that's what we're talking about now. Um, uh, I'm still hearing something. Let's see. I'm still hearing some stuff. <laughs> um no, that's that's not it. That's something else. Um anyway, so far with like I say, what we don't, what we're wanting to we don't really have a like a topic topic to talk about. So we just gonna just share. Uh, whatever God puts on our heart, um, kind of. Well, her, my wife had the idea we could talk about uh, some of the solutions that we came up with during the time that we were going through. Now I know we didn't really tell you the whole story uh, about what happened, uh, 
we were just kind of hitting and missing with it. We were, you knew that something happened. You just didn't know what. So that's kind of like what we're we're at now. Um, so I want to kind of give you a a little synopsis. Me and my wife will both will try to do that best we can. Give us a little synopsis of what exactly uh, happened um, between us. And so um, I guess I can um, I got to give a synopsis. It's, it's, it's got to be short. Because we're talking about like months, you know. <laughs> almost a year. Yeah, it was almost a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was almost a year. You tell them, so, and a lot of this, uh, a lot of this might be kind of, um, I would say some of it was emotional. Believe me, it was, it was an emotional moment for both of us, but we learned, I think, I think it was more, even though we went through it at the time, we didn't realize it was a learning experience for both of us because we didn't realize what we were going to have to encounter the people that we was going to have to encounter. And so that's the reason why um, I believe that we went through it for the reason why we went through it. So um, I guess high, high is a, I guess a good place to start is in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I said, my wife and I had been we have been married. Uh, this would be our twentieth year. We made two decades together so far, and that's a, that's saying a lot today, considering how divorce rates are high, even amongst people in the church, and how that people are separating from each other every time you turn around. And so, the enemy is really fighting in that area of marriage. And I think that's one of the reasons why I, we were determined to do this because we saw the attacks. Uh, we saw the, the enemy do using all different types of methods to try to get us to split, to get us to fall out of. And we've had friends, people that we've known for years that had separated, that divorced for whatever reason. They were Christian, good, God-loving, God-fearing, in ministry, some of them, Christians that had decided that they were no longer going to be married because of whatever reason. And now people are splitting over things that really shouldn't even be divorced over. Right. Um. And, and, and I'm going to be open tonight. I'm going to be open with you because you might think, well, we, we this perfect couple and we've been doing this thing for a while and whatever. Now, I don't want to give you that impression. We're just a simple couple that's been married for 20 years, that's been, been through ups and downs. We don't have any degrees in, in, in anything. I do. I have a degree and it's not in this. It's not in marriage and family. It's not in ministry. I have a degree, and it's a social degree in in arts and science, bachelor in arts and science and computer science. Is basically what it is because I dealt with computer networking and things like that. My wife, she didn't have a degree. Uh, we were pastors at one time. We pastored the church for at least six months, <laughs> but we had been at that ministry for many years, so we knew that ministry in and out. We knew how to function in ministry. We knew how to deal with people. We knew what uh, we counseled a couple of people and during the time that we was in the six months we were there. But we did a lot of it, people. We didn't talk to people outside of the church, but more people outside than in the church. But the same things is happening outside of the church is happening in the church. So, I mean, you have to look at it. The enemy is not, he is not discriminatory when it comes to who he attacks. He just attacks. He doesn't question it. He doesn't try to find out who it is, what they're about. He knows because he sees the, sees what's on you. Right. He desire. He knows what you're doing, and he sees what you're doing, and he's gonna do everything to do he can to stop it. Now, 
get into the story. Like I said, be transparent because it's certain you have to understand uh, where we came from. When I got married, um, when we got married, we were pretty, pretty normal couple. I mean, like I say, we both in church. We stayed busy in the ministry and stayed busy in church and. And we went through different phases in our life because we were getting older, our kids were getting bigger. And then all of a sudden, we went from being um, parents of teenagers to parents of grown children. So now we're into, then we became into nesters, and then all of a sudden we became grandparents. And so over the course of time, all these things just changed in a, in like a period of 20 years. Yes. <laughs> so. I had, and with unbeknownst to me, um, I had a seed of pornography planted in me when I was 14. And the stuff didn't decide to come out until I got married. And I had, and my wife had experienced that stuff as well when she was single, you know, and when she was younger. And we had our both our experience, but me, it, I didn't realize how much it affected me until I got older and I got married. And then all of a sudden the temptations came. So now, because then, see, when we was looking at that stuff, then it was a little more hard to access it. It was that as easily readily accessible as it is now. You can make a mistake and put the wrong word in Google and get porn. Yes. <laughs> now, back then, you had to, they had covers over the books. They had secret rooms where you can get porn, uh, pornography. They had secret places where you can get the tapes. They had it, they had it labeled with triple X and you had to have a membership to get it. And I mean, you had them, you had them hid under the bed. People used to hide it and not see it out in the open. Now they probably put it on the coffee table, like it's, you know, a magazine, like a good housekeeping or something. But you know, it, 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 then it was taboo. It wasn't something that you just do. Like now you can click on it and it's there. You right. got f live on close up. And, and we was listening to something last night about that same thing was just in the company was talking about that you know all this different stuff it's active i mean it's acting it ain't no woman no man on the earth exists like that i'm sorry <laughs> that is a, just like you watching the have and have nots and watching all these other shows and empire and all those are actors guess what so those old people that do these, these movies for pornography they are actors they have been surgically altered they are actors they have take meds they they do drugs they and and i mean it's all it's not normal and yeah, so but yeah, when a you a lot of it's scripted yeah it's scripted i mean and then uh, believe me i was in this stuff for a minute you don't watch it for the for the sake of acting. You really because the act is horrible. I mean, you you know you know you know and hello, uh, yeah. I, uh, you come to deliver my mail and uh, you know and then you uh, do, 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 you know music. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, yeah. and then they getting out of their clothes with then he just better. I'm like, come on, that's not real. Oh, they picking them up on the street. Okay, last time I checked, when you picked a woman up off the street and paid her for sex. That's prostitution. Last time I heard. <laughs> I don't know what they call it today. They call it filming, you know, they film this stuff. They have some chick that they done paid already to walk up the street and they pick up on the street. They say, oh, we got a little photo shoot. She both be the naive chick that don't know. And next thing you know, we got about three, four guys running the train on. I'm like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> but this is the kind of stuff that people get caught up in and it's addictive and a lot of people even in the church have gotten addicted to this and will not then they're scared to say anything because it's so taboo because we as the church have not made it we have not made it easy for us anyway when it comes to sex because we it's never true. really laid out god's law as far as that we just said that we can't do it and it's bad that's all we knew we that's all we knew yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, you can't do it, you, you know, and, and, and they, oh, yeah, they preach the lust message, and it's better to marry than to burn. And, I mean, come on, man. Or right, anyway. <laughs> anyway, I got caught up in that stuff. The first time I went through it, like I say, my wife hadn't really never encountered, she never, was, she never had to deal with that. So being a new, you being a new wife and never married, you have a man, it's all of a sudden got 
beset with this stuff and then you saying okay what am i gonna do and it and it and, it, and like she said if you listen to our last podcast um we talked about the feelings that the woman has when the man does that and so she shared that with us the last time and she probably repeat it again when i get her side <laughs> and so when i did and I, it was an up and down thing it wasn't it wasn't like i was just consistently all the time but it would come on me and seasons and i didn't recognize that this was a spirit of a of sin and addiction that had come over me i didn't realize that it was affecting me in every area and i didn't realize it so when the last when the last time which was which was uh last year um it happened well the incident I confess to, and she can tell you that. I confess to that incident. So I was I was done with it, and as far as that concerned. But all of a sudden, the residuals of that incident started happening. People, and because she was already wounded, it made it easy for the enemy to come in right there. You don't realize, men, or even women, you don't realize that when you when you do that, you affect the person with you. Just just like you going and taking a butcher knife and slitting your arm and thinking that it's not going to affect the rest of you. If anything, if you cut yourself, now I'll give you a better example. If you go and stub your toe, your whole body is going to react to that. That's true. You hit your toe, you gonna go. Your hands gonna go for it. Your brain gonna tell your body that tell your nerves and tell your nervous system and everything that you uh, just hit your toe. Your hands is gonna go toward your foot. Your mind is gonna react. Your body's gonna react. Your mouth is gonna react. Everything is going to go to the tension of that toe that you hit. You affect you when you are a part of a unit, a family unit, and when you're in a covenant with someone. What you do affects them. And that's what I didn't realize, that my sin was not exclusive. It was inclusive. It will affect me, affect my children, affect my grandkids. And so, guess what? I was really talking about that today. There was a scripture in the Bible that talks about David. When David sinned with Bathsheba, he was confronted by Nathan. And Nathan told him, through the spirit of the Lord, by prophecy, the Lord told him, he said, I could have give you, God could have gave you anything you could have asked. And if you'd have asked, I'd have gave you more. He said, because you had done this sin, you had brought a reproach against me and caused the enemy to blaspheme. He says, now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, the sword shall never depart your house and I will raise up trouble in the midst of your house. And under this son, and this is scripture that we looked at today, he said, and I, what you have done in secret, I'm going to do before all and under this son. And the person that got fulfilled because Absalom took all his concubines, just like he took another man's wife. They, so Absalom took his wives and slept with them before everybody under the sun in broad daylight. So there is nothing here that should not be revealed. Right. So what God is doing, and so this began a snowball of a lot of stuff, you know, because I didn't know how to approach it correctly because then then I got into this place of trying to defend myself the whole time instead of just saying, okay, and trying to fix it and, and trying to rectify it and trying to do the right thing in the beginning it brought us into this place of, of where it was in this cycle. You know, I'm trying to defend. She trying to, to get me to confess, and I wouldn't confess. Then she would accuse, and then I said I wasn't doing it. And then it was, it was a cycle. It was just going back and forth. And then and it, escalated, it escalated quick. <laughs> we told y'all some of the stuff. I mean, we escalated because then we started to play the Avengers game. She would do something to me, I'd do something to her. Then she, I would do something to her, she would do something to me. It was back and forth. We lost just total just stuff. I mean, just like I was saying in my last podcast, we just lost a lot of stuff because we just was acting out of character. We didn't really discern what was going on. 
We couldn't, we couldn't come out of it. We talked to each other. We'd argue. And, but a lot of the problem was we never saw each other and it gave the enemy a reason to put a lot of accusations in the midst of us because we didn't see each other. No. I didn't see well work. Like I said, we need, we didn't see each other at least four times out the month. I think she was off two day to other weekend. And that was only two. It was four of them. That's four weekends. So I only seen her four whole weekends because the rest of the time I'm running to work. Yo, know, like uh, we would only see each other uh, out of a whole month, four mm-hmm. days. Yeah, out of whole month. So if you if month's thirty one days, then at least twenty six of those we seen each other, or twenty seven of those we seen each other. We didn't see each other that out of them totally. Now either I was she either either she was sleep, I was dropping off, I was bringing her back, and I come home she sleep. That's how it worked. Four or five times I ran back and forth, taking her home, bringing her back, doing this and doing that. And then when it was off, when we did have some time together, we argued. Yeah. <laughs> now tell me what kind of sense that made. <laughs> yeah, the time we had together. The time, we yeah. We spent it. We spent it arguing. We would, we, and it was an argue make up, argue make up. It was up and down. And it was really, we had tied to the point where it was a one, few times where I just would leave. I, I'd never done it like that. I, I just left. Um, and to this day, there was one particular time that we had, we, we, we had, we had gotten a text war. It was more words, like my wife say. And they had really, pulled her to the limit on a job that day. And she was already dealing with me and that. And so it was something that I was going on on one of the social sites and and I wasn't I wasn't aware of it at that time. But she had been through it and like I say, when you like that, everything's amplified. Right. And so when she saw that, she of course she kind of snapped off on me and I was done. So when she was leaving um, but so I made the decision. I was, I was done then. And, um, so I really, I, I, I just left, but I, ha- I, I have to say is I, the first time I ever heard my wife cry was that day. Now I've been knowing my wife for all these years and never heard her cry. And that was the first time I've heard, I've seen her, you know, you know, sniff, but I mean, just cry. I never seen her do that. And it, and to this day, it still haunts me. Because I said to myself, Lord, I would never want to see her do that again. So I try to do everything I can to make sure to see her smile. I, I don't ever want to hear that. That's, you don't ever want to see that, Mia. You don't ever want. You have to be a really cold-blooded brother to just sit there and just. And at the time, I was not. I was just not thinking. And I was just upset. And I had to, I didn't want to leave. I just want to leave away from her a while long enough to think because it was just too much. And so I think I made it. I was call myself <laughs> leaving and going and spend my time with my brother. My brother lived in California. I was going to drive. Now, mind you, my car wouldn't have made it at the time because I think we had then found out he had a quarter oil in that thing. It was sounding like a truck. And I have 300. <laughs> we have a 300. That thing sounded like a truck. So yeah, I wouldn't have made it. It had burnt up before I even got in the city, out of city limits. I was lucky to get to the forest I got. And uh, I got to Baytown, which is maybe 100 miles away from my am. I got 100 miles before God started telling me, you need to go back home. And uh, he told me, said, because this is not how you this is not how you work this. And so. And then the the, the thing about it was mm-hmm. when when he left and I told the Lord, I said, well, if he don't return mm-hmm. home, I was leaving. Yeah. I, um, I, I think it was like a certain time. I said, well, okay, he hadn't made it back. So I texted him and I said my farewells and my goodbyes. I said, um, uh, I think when he did return, I had them packed up all my clothes. Yeah. They was packed and I was ready to go. So I yes, said, well, mm-hmm. um, I said, well, this is it. I said, if you don't return home, uh, tonight, 
I told the Lord, I am leaving. I was serious. Mm -hmm. I say, is no turning back. I told the Lord, I say, I am moving on and I'm going to move forward. Yeah. And um, when he did walk in the door, all my clothes was <laughs> packed yeah, yeah. and ready to go. Yeah. We we, we just ended up leaving it like that because mm -hmm. we knew that we was going to end up leaving anyway together. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we, yeah, so uh, I think we both was done. <laughs> yeah, we both was done. So I, when I did come back though, the Lord had dealt with me on the way there. And uh, Mercy Me made a song called Even If. And it was based on the story of the three Hebrew boys. And they were telling him, they told him never cares. And even if the Lord doesn't save us, we will not bow. And so that song came on while I was coming home. And I told her about it. I said, well, even if nothing ever changes, I was still going to remain faithful to what God wanted me to do. He wanted me to change. And he was telling me to, that I needed to. And... Now, mind you, I was living from the pornography stuff, and uh, but my issue was right now trying to rebuild the damage that was already done. And the crazy part about it was the porn wasn't the one that did it. It was the other stuff, that residual from it. And so what ended up happening, we had to, we, we were up and down, I think, up to about the end of the year. Cause it's it's a it's a whole lot. I mean, it's it's more than what we can tell you tonight. Mm -hmm. But uh, we ended up uh, at the end of the year, we made a decision that we were going to. He, we had made a decision that either we were going to fix it, or we was going to part. That was what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. And so we decided we was going to stay together, and we was going to fix it. So we did go. We actually got some counseling. First time ever, 20 years, we got counseling. And one of our pastors, not sure he was my mission pastor, but he's qualified to counsel people because he only, pastor only had certain people to counsel. And he was one of them. So he set up a time when he counseled with us because the other guy that was going to, we never could catch him because at that time we couldn't contact him because we didn't have any way to do it. And uh, he was uh, easiest access to, at the time we offered. So I was like, yeah, okay, we, we go. And I was the one who suggested it. I mean, I knew that we couldn't do this by ourselves. You know, this, the, mm. the part, um, we almost didn't even make it to. We, just, we boy, didn't. We almost didn't even make it to counseling because we had a war of words. Even before the counseling, I mean, we yeah. had gotten to a big old, and I knew that was the enemy. Mm -hmm. He just didn't want us to get the help that we needed, so. We got into a big old argument even before counseling, so we went in there with attitudes, was oh, uh, attitude problems. We was mad, we was upset, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the first time we had scheduled counseling, we didn't make it at all. No, because we argued and fussed, and and until time got better, then we was <laughs> time we did get there it was over. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so we didn't even make the first counseling no. because we was like, we was in the war then. I mean, got up with, I guess, full of the devil. I don't know what, <laughs> what had happened. We, but, um, it was, the enemy had us to the point and he really was more so hurting me. Now he had me to the point where I was doing stuff without being aware of it. And I actually could not deny some of the stuff that I, I look at it and I was like, I ain't no way in the world I could have done that. But I did. I, I had to, we had to admit the fact. I said, well, pff, "Ain't no way they're looking around that unless there's a poster guy in hand. That'd be the only way, other than me. I mean, I I couldn't deny it. But then there was some stuff that the enemy had to believe in. See, I mean, it was weird. I mean, when you get like that, I'm telling you, when you get like that, you in a fog. You you don't. It's no. You don't have no concept of reality. Everything." It, Anything real or fake is all mixed up. Mm -hmm. Everything was mixed up with us. We couldn't think straight. We had we couldn't pray. We wrote a lot. We wrote a lot. <laughs> yeah, that was the only way we could really yeah. uh, get our point across. Yeah, we journaled and yeah. what we did, and somebody and he suggested that and we was doing a lot of the stuff he suggested. Mm -hmm. He said the problem was it's not so much that we didn't know what to do. We just wasn't doing it. And it was. We knew everything he was telling us, the counselor was telling us. We knew because we said that same stuff to other people. 
And I'm like, why is it we can't apply this to our lives? It's because of the simple fact we chose not to. Because we chose to hold on to our own little pain and we wanted the other person to hurt as bad as us. Right. And that's a dangerous thing for you to do. Is yeah, to hold when on. You want to uh, want that person to um, experience mm-hmm. how they made you feel. Yeah. And I think that was my greatest struggle was I'm yeah. like, okay, you hurt me. Um, I'm going to show you how this feel. Yeah. Because I need you to understand. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to drill it in, peg it in. This is yeah. how this feel. Yeah. And then they got to the point where every time that you would hurt me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to show you. Yeah. I'm going to show you. You know, that was pride. Yeah. That was this. I was walking in pride mm-hmm. and it only pride, um, four up and down. No. You know, I'm going to show you, I'm going mm-hmm. to show you better not to tell you. That was my mm-hmm. attitude. Yeah. Okay. You going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. You know, I, and I would literally tell them, okay, I'm going to pay you back. Yeah. I would let, you know, I'm going to, okay, this is payback. I'll write letters. I'm going to pay you back. She put in big old giant big letters. Big letters. And, and I would tell them, you're going to suffer <laughs> and you going to pay and you going to cry a great cry. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was... <laughs> we got notebooks where she she ended up going there with about throwing it away. But we had notebooks, whole spiral notebooks, like five subject notebooks. We had wrote back and forth. We wrote ourselves. I got a whole journal filled. Uh, I think you end up tossing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, how we was just so hard hearted, how the yeah. enemy came in and just hardened our heart. And now, some was- of that, now, most of that stuff, most of it was a lot of the stuff that I had. When we had a good day, I wrote about it. I say, "Hey, yeah. we kind of did day and this, this, and that." And yeah, we then, did both. Yeah, yeah we, we did, did both. We did so both. we didn't like write all yes, bad no. stuff. We, we wrote good things that we was, but we was yeah. making some progress. Yeah, we did say, "Well, okay, we had a good day today." We did mm-hmm. um, esteem each other and yeah, and we did uh, thank each other. Well, you know, he did this, he did that. So mm-hmm. yeah. I would write about that, and so would he. Yeah, so, so we did write about we didn't write all bad stuff and just yeah. saying you know they you know they the devil and she's she's a woman the devil's wife and you know that yeah. kind of, you know so, I mean, yeah so we, it was good and yeah. good and bad so we wrote about we wrote so we can express how we felt about stuff and a lot of times though it, the mistake was that we let each other read or we snuck each other read yeah because it was stuff. supposed to be in confident yeah in confidence and yeah. uh and what I would do was and which was a mistake. Mm-hmm. You know, knowing that we were already mad and had an argument. Yeah. And knowing that he was just expressing those feelings on paper that he couldn't tell me. Yeah. And I would read it and knowing my emotions was, oh, my God. Yeah. And so I would read it with bad understanding, not that he was just trying to, um, you know, express that. Yeah. And I would get upset. <laughs> and I would get mad. And no, he didn't. Mm-hmm. And he didn't say that about me. And he ain't feeling like that. And, and. And told her, okay, here come payback. So I'm finna get my paper and pencil. And I'm I'm not gonna, you know, he ain't know I read it, but I'm responding to it, what he yeah. said, you know, in my notes. And, yeah. And, and I was like, you and know that, what? Yeah, and that and that's and or she would leave it out. She wouldn't like close it up and put it up. She would leave oh, it no. out. I wanted him to yeah, see it. Yeah, she wanted me to see it and this, I read it and I get offended. Yeah, so I'm right. This is how down. I feel about yeah. what you said in your book. <laughs> Yeah, and so we went, we did that nonsense for like months too. So eventually, I think what happened at the end of the year, and the year rolled around, I think it was again, like, uh, from about the time my birthday was end of November to December 31st, we was, we was okay. We had, you know, like small fires, but it wasn't major like that. We kind of all start island down because we start really trying to listen to one another mm-hmm. and um the guy that uh dan had suggested what we're learning about now he suggests us get the book uh love after marriage and um we started reading that book and uh but here's the thing even we try we try different things but yeah. during the time that we were trying this stuff we were still in this in this place so we were basically like one particular time we used to love there and we had to write down uh, there was one of the days that we contacted each other today, which mm-hmm. I didn't do a whole lot of that, and I should have done more of it because yeah. I was at work. Because when we first started, it uh, it we it was turning around, yeah, and we was making some progress, yeah. And then she wrote a note about me 
the shame not contacting and when she did it it was like I almost threw a book in the trash. I was like, we we ain't doing this right. <laughs> no. So we stopped doing that. So when he got that book, we ended up reading the book. We kind of paused because we had gotten a, in a few days. We would get these spells about every so often we get these spells. And um, so we started realizing that it was a pattern. So we knew that it was something other than us right. uh, dealing with this. Come to find out uh what we were, what we were dealing with, uh, the stuff that was going on with us, and it was just basically instigated, a lot of it, and mm-hmm. so. So we're going to talking about that uh, another time. Tell you about how that a lot of that stuff is influenced by outside forces, but, the uh, to get to this point, to kind of wrap it up. <laughs> Uh, what we ended up doing, actually, is once we read this book, we got an idea of what we need to do. We knew a lot of this stuff. We just applied it. So what we ended up doing, uh, I think, like I said, my mother passed in the beginning of the year. And the week that she had passed was a rough week for me. My wife really saw some a, a side of me she had never seen. She had never seen me that I don't usually get depressed, but a bad spirit of depression came on me. And I was to the point where I was just, just hopeless, you know. And I was mourning over my mom, and I was really dealing with both the fact that I was felt like I was losing two people instead of one. And it was a double loss for me because I felt like I was losing her too. But she stuck in there with me. And I think one night we sat down, and, and in the midst of all this, I would just, like I said, I would just... It's a mess. I, you know, I just basically told, you know, I wanted her to know what I was going, what was going on with me. And at that point, I just, I was going, I wanted to consider feelings, but I just wanted her to understand. And I, and I just told her, you know, how I was being made feel and how I was being treated at the time. And she was patient with me. She kind of, she didn't get upset. She listened. And I think that's what really did something. She let me say how I really felt, and I started to feel better after that because I realized, okay, then we're in the right direction. And lo and behold, when my schedule changed, that solved by 90% of the problem right there. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. Actually, it was an instant turnaround since my schedule changed because basically it all boiled down to is that she wanted me around. Because you had real, you had to realize we had been married all this time. We had never spent a whole lot of time away from each other. We'd always been around each other. We didn't, we want we like being around each other, so we were used to that. So for us not to have only two days, those four days out the month, that's ridiculous. For two years, I'm talking about no short time. It was two years of this, so we went through it. So it was the money was okay, but guess what? It wouldn't work the marriage, and I decided no, I'm gonna take the hit. I'm going to go to days in the same job. I went to the day shift and God started rearranging my schedule so I could be able to go to church on Sundays and evenings. So now I can be able to attend worship and be able to be a part of the church again and now do this, what we're doing now, and, you know, and be with her doing it and just, you know, not so focus on other stuff, but just be more around her and just spend time with her and be, be in each other's world, you know? So... I know I talk yeah, a lot. But yeah. <laughs> well, and another thing that turned it around yeah. was, um, well, we did make the second counseling uh, yeah, session. Yeah, we, we had. And we he did. pointed out some things that we were doing wrong. Yeah, yeah. And uh, words that were causing war. Because mm-hmm. I had a bad habit of saying, always, you always. So yeah. he, he got to pointed out some things and some issues. We are going to deal with that too another time. But yeah. Uh, I know I had uh, one of mine was trust, like I say, you know, maybe our next podcast I would yeah. share with y'all. Yeah, we'll deal uh, with the issue of trust and the should we trust. Can, uh, can you trust after after uh, an, a blow like that, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that and share yeah. how I didn't trust him mm-hmm. and how I didn't believe in him. Uh, but I didn't have no confidence. I mean, everything was like just gone. Yeah. And uh, so I will talk about that on the 
next podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we get into our, yeah. our late hour. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we just want you to know that, like I said, we are <laughs> we are here on. Uh, check us out. This this will go on our uh, uh, site on Podbean, which is embracing marriage with Barry and Karen. You can check us out on embracemarriage.podbean.com. So you can check us out there. You can check us out on YouTube at uh, about, at um, Embrace and Marriage Ministry. That's where our, our Embrace and Marriage is bracing our channel. You can check us out. We have video that will come up for that, also for the podcast. Uh, you can check us out on Google Plus. We're there at the same name and different places like that. Like I said, we, we are here. Also on Facebook, there to be different. Uh, wait. Embrace Marriage, there to be different. That's the one. <laughs> check us out there. So that's our outside our page where you can check us out, um, see different pictures we got up and different. The post is also there too, so you can check us out there. Well, people, we want you to know that we're praying for you, we're believing for the best for your marriage, but and the best for your relationships. And on the next podcast, we'll talk about trust, and we'll talk about how to win it again. Okay, God bless you. And we'll see you on the next time. Good night.